Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and I do want to get back into the headlines. Take a look at your screen here. Hundreds of people storming into the main airport in Russia's Dagestan region and rushing onto the landing field, chanting anti-Semitic slogans and seeking passengers arriving on a flight from the Israeli city of Tel Aviv. This is just some of the video from that airport provided to us here at Live Now from Fox. Russian news reports said the crowd on Sunday surrounded the airliner, which does belong to Russian carrier Red Wings. Dagestan's Ministry of Health said more than 20 people were injured, with two in critical condition, and it said the injured did include police officers and civilians. Rebecca Koffler is managing editor of CutToTheNews.com, a former DIA intelligence officer and author of Putin's Playbook. She joins us now live to talk more about all of this. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here this morning. Of course, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Josh, and your audience. So when you see that video coming in out of Russia and you start to hear some of the details, can you break down for me what first went through your mind watching that? What first went through my mind is that I am very frightened for the Jewish people in Russia. Uh, what is happening this anti-Semitic uh, sentiment is not new for Russia. Uh, Anti-Semitism was very widely spread in the former USSR from where I'm actually uh, from. I was born and raised in Soviet Russia, but it is new uh, for the Putin presidency. Putin has been containing what he calls the Islamic extre extremism for the past uh, 20 years and pursued largely a pro-Israel policy. But this is a complete change. And this change has sparked by, on the one hand, by the Israel-Hamas conflict, but on the other hand, by the Biden administration policy in Eurasia. Yeah, and there's a lot of other videos that have definitely come in. And I imagine this isn't an isolated incident. I feel as though uh, we've heard from others about different anti-Semitic attacks amid the war, whether it's in Russia or, you know, in the U.S. as well. Is that kind of your understanding? Oh, absolutely. So uh, what this has uh, conflict exposed uh, to us, that there are two things that are a major threat, not just to the United States and uh, to Russia, but to the world as, at large. And there's something that is called is Islamic extremism and even terrorism. And because our schools in America have not really been teaching uh, uh, history properly, and uh, many professors uh, lean very strongly uh, left. They have educated our children as, you know, uh, being receptive to this victimization. And a lot of our students are pro-Palestinian and effectively pro-terrorist because um, the Palestinians are controlled by Hamas. And unfortunately, our students are not calling the murderous Hamas uh, terrorists, but they're attacking Israel. And the same is going on in Russia. The same is going on in the United States. And it's a huge threat for everyone. And I want to dig a little deeper because you kind of touched on this already, but Russia's reaction to the war between Israel and Hamas and whether they plan to get involved in, in any way. Yes, so Putin is posturing himself as a uh, as an, an honest broker, right? He has called for the uh, formation of a, a dual state solution, but don't be fooled. He is actually, uh, unfortunately, has aligned himself with the terrorists. As I said, this is a major reversal for uh, Putin's policy. Putin has been playing both sides for decades. Why is that? Because Russia has a major Islamic extremism problem. Um, during the Soviet Union, uh, no religion was allowed. It was outlawed. So Russian origin Muslims ended up going to the Afghanistan-Pakistan border to
to study Islam and they uh, learned the extremist version of Islam and they came back and, and uh, the rest of republics of Chechnya and Dagestan were causing, you know, big terrorism problems. So Putin fought two wars brutally to squash this uh, extremism. So, but the reason Putin is now positioning himself uh, effectively align, aligned with Iran is because he needs weaponry from Iran uh, to use in the war against Ukraine. And also, he is basically has common grievances with Iran, uh, Russia and uh, and Iran are basically an axis of convenience because they are both anti-West. They want to remake the world. Um, they want to change the world order where it is China and Russia and Iran are top dogs and not the United States. And that's the underlying driver for this. And then also, do you think, uh, speaking about Russia specifically, that we are going to see more of these attacks and protesters and, and things of that nature? Because as we mentioned, we know that several people were injured here and it was a very dramatic scene inside of that airport. So do you think overall we're actually going to see more of these situations just like this one? I'm very concerned that we may. Um, so here's the situation. Uh, Muslims are the fastest growing ethnicity uh, and religion. In Russia, it's considered more of an ethnicity, just like Jews. Uh, in Russia, they have a huge demographic problem. Moscow is the largest Muslim city in Europe. The two million of them out of the population of 12.5. Comparatively, Jews are now only 83,000 uh, in the entire Russia. And that figure is actually half of what it used to be, 160,000, uh, before Putin's invasion of uh, Ukraine. And so what I'm concerned about is that this uh, anti-Semitic sentiment that was sparked by these two wars, right, Russia, Ukraine, and most importantly, the conflict between uh, Israel and Hamas, or more accurately, Hamas's terrorist attack on Israel, is going to spark further anti-Semitism and further uh, riots. And the proper name of it is actually pogrom. It's not just a riot. It's going to be very interesting to watch what Putin does, because as I said, he was ruthless, you know, squashing the uh, extremist, Islamic extremism, terrorism in Chechnya in the 90s. So if he doesn't quash this very um, strongly, it's going to continue and it's going to uh, propagate throughout Russia. But my suspicion is he's going to be calibrating his strategy because, again, he wants, on the one hand, to appease the Muslims, but he wants to appease the moderate uh, Muslims and he wants to quash the extremists. So we're going to watch and see what happens. It potentially will be a huge problem uh, for Putin if he doesn't nip it in the bud and uh, and contain this problem right now. And I do want to talk a little bit more about Russia's ongoing war with Ukraine at this point. Does that factor into any of the decision making that uh, we do have from Vladimir Putin on how he reacts to the Israel and Hamas war? Again, I know you've touched on this, but I like to dig a little deeper and, you know, get some more information on a topic that so many people are talking about. Of course. So, yes, Russia-Ukraine uh, war is a big factor in his change of posture towards Israel. Putin has actually normalized relations with Israel, which were uh, very, very uh, bad during the Soviet Union, right? So Putin was the first Russian president to visit Israel in 2005. He had a very uh, positive working relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. What united them was uh, their real politic worldview, right? It's not all of the ideologically uh, driven, you know, politics. 
politics. It's the national security issues. What do I mean by that? Both considered Islamic extremism as the existential threat. So Netanyahu didn't say a word um, to condemn Putin when uh, Chechnya was brutally uh, destroyed. Putin effectively obliterated Grozny, the capital of Chechnya. Netanyahu didn't say anything when Putin invaded Crimea. But what has changed is under relentless pressure of the Biden administration, Israel finally provided some defensive equipment to Ukraine, and that was the last straw for Putin. Putin cannot afford losing the war in Ukraine because Ukraine is part of Russia's perceived strategic security perimeter, and the uh, this perimeter, the strategic buffer on which Russia relied for centuries for its security, has reduced with the collapse of the Soviet Union to 100 miles. And Netanyahu understood that, but unfortunately, right now the camp is 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 split or the or the union Putin Netanyahu and if the broader conflict uh Unravels, you know, the, the the third world war that everyone is talking about, Russia, Iran, China. You know, we know where everybody is going to, uh, whom everybody is going to side with. The battle lines are very clear: Russia, China, Iran on one side. You know, United States, uh, NATO is on the other side. Where does the Arab Street go? The Arab Street basically is supporting right now um, the Palestinians. Right, nobody uh, virtually is siding, at least overtly. With with uh, Israel. And so this kind of dynamic is going to impact uh, if the situation, if we, um, if the conflict escalates into a broader war. And uh, unfortunately, the Biden administration didn't factor in, right? Putin is maybe is an evil person, but he's also a real politic person. And it would have made sense to have at least you know, not to have Russia on the U.S. side, but at least not have Russia to be uh, vehemently anti-U.S. So we're going to see how that unravels. Hopefully, we're going to quash this um, right, you know, right now. But uh, with U.S. military bases being attacked by Iranian proxies, my assessment is that is it is going to escalate, and it's going to be very, very important uh, for us to devise a viable strategy, not like we did in Russia, Ukraine, which basically we were unfortunately unprepared, uh, despite the fact that back in the intelligence community, and as you said, I'm a former DIA intelligence officer, we had every possible intelligence indicating to us what we was going to do. And, but unfortunately, President Obama decided to uh, be friends with Putin, and Vice President Biden also did not bother to uh, develop an anti-Putin strategy. So this time we need to do it right so that we contain this conflict and we don't allow World War III to, uh, to take place. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and provide that perspective. Is there anything you wanna add before I let you go? Uh, what I would like to add is that uh, the uh, American people pay very, very close attention to what is going on in our own country because we are very good at high-tech type of warfare, but our adversaries have developed a new generation warfare. Look, we are sending these um, carrier strike groups, right, to deter Iran. But on the one hand, we have not secured the border. The Iranian agents are already here. According to the 2023 intelligence community assessment, Iran has been developing clandestine networks in the United States for the last decade. Do you know how many millions of dollars we paid uh, for the security of Mike Pompeo and some of the officials in the Trump administration? It's because the terror threat is already here. And so we need to close the border right now because if you couple what's going on on college campuses and you couple that with the attacks on military bases and you look at how these agents have already penetrated us, this is going to be a, a, a nightmare for the United States domestically if we don't immediately address the threat that has already invaded our country. That's what I wanted to add. Rebecca, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. 
Of course.